good morning friends today we can see bioethics the term bioethics it was introduced in 1970s by van porter it is a study of ethical social legal philosophical and other related issues emerging in healthcare biology and medicine three major ways of viewing bioethics can be seen descriptive bioethics that is the people the way people analyze life as affecting their responsibilities and moral action second one is perspective bioethics it is telling people what is acceptable and unacceptable and also about the rights of others third one is interactive bioethics it includes the debate and discussions involving people society and communities we can see four major principles of bioethics autonomy beneficence non maleficence and justice first one is autonomy it's the right of an individual to make decisions for example decision regarding their own health treating a patient according to patient's desire involving patient in treatment decisions considering the patient's need and safeguarding all these come under autonomy second one is beneficence that is do good to others that is primary obligation is service to the patient and public at large duty to promote patient welfare competent and timely delivery of health care is very important non maleficence duty to protect the patient from harm health care promotes must not hurt the patient knowing one's own limitations and when to refer to other specialist is very important in non maleficence justice fairness and equality patients should share more or less equally the cost and benefits of healthcare system next we can see bellman report the bellman report it was written by national commission and for the protection of human subjects of medical that is biomedical and behavioral research protection of participants in clinical trials and research studies is the main objective of bellman report the three fundamental ethical principles for using any human subjects for research are respect for person beneficence and justice respect for person this include protecting the autonomy of the people treating them with courtesy and respect allowing for informed consent and the researchers must be truthful beneficence that it include the philosophy of do no harm while maximizing the benefits for the research project and minimizing risk to the research subjects justice justice include ensuring reasonable non exploitative and well considered procedures are administered and the fair distribution of cost and benefits to potential research participants equally next we can see bioethics committee the international bioethics committee is a body of 36 independent experts that follows the progress in the life sciences and its application in order to ensure the respect for human dignity and freedom it was created in 1993 and ibc provides the only global forum for reflection in bioethics the director general of unesco convenes the ibc at least once a year the committee produces advice and recommendations on specific issues and these advices and recommendations are dis disseminated and submitted to the director general transmission of these recommendations to the member states executive board and the general conference by the director general the rules and regulations of international bioethics committee of unesco we can see 12 articles 
in article 1 a permanent committee named international bioethics committee of unesco is hereby established within unesco article 2 it gives or it, it is mainly dealing with the functions of this ibc It shall promote the reflection on the ethical and legal issues raised by research in the life sciences. It must encourage the exchange of ideas and information, particularly through education. It shall provide awareness among general public, specialized groups and decision makers involved in bioethics. It shall cooperate with international governmental and non-governmental organizations concerned with the issues raised in the field of bioethics it shall cooperate with the national and regional bioethics committee and similar bo similar bodies it shall make recommendations and give advice in accordance with unesco's rules and regulations it shall identify practices that could be con contrary to human dignity article 3 Article 3 it is mainly dealing with membership. IBC shall be composed of 36 members appointed by the Director General. Members shall be independent and shall act in their personal capacity. When proposing their candidates for IBC, the candidates must be specialists in life sciences, in social and human sciences, including law, human rights, philosophy, education and communication with the necessary competence and authority to perform the IBC's duties. The Director General shall not appoint simultaneously more than one national of the same state. Article 4, it mainly deals with the observers. Member states and associate members of UNESCO may take part as observers in the meeting. Non-member states which have set up a permanent observe mission to UNESCO may also take part as observers in the meeting on the invitation of Director General. United Nations and the other organization of United Nations systems with which UNESCO has concluded an agreement may also take part as observers in the meeting. Therefore, member states and associate members of UNESCO can take part in the meeting. Then non-member states who are in close connection with UNESCO, they can act as observers and also the United Nations and other organizations of United Nations systems who have signed an agreement with UNESCO can also act as an observer or present as an observer in the meeting. The international governmental and non-governmental organizations with similar objectives to those of IBC may be invited to take part as observers in the meeting. Specialists or other relevant persons may be consulted within the competence of the IBC. Article 5, it mainly deals with the Director General shall convene the IBC at least once a year. Article 6, it is the terms of office. The term of office for members of the IBC shall be four years. Half the IBC members shall be replaced every two years. The Director General shall not appoint the same person for more than two consecutive terms of office. Article 7 mainly deals with advices and recommendations. Advice and recommendations of IBC shall be taken by consents promptly made public and widely disseminated. Any members of IBC shall have the right to record a dissenting opinion. That is, the recommendations and advices must be made public and must be widely disseminated. Article 8, it includes the rules of procedure. IBC shall adopt, adopt its rules of procedure. Article 9, Secretariat, the Director General of UNESCO shall provide staff and other means required for the operation of the Secretariat of the IBC. And the Director General can also appoint a member of the Secretariat of UNESCO as the Secretary General of the IBC. Article 10, it deals with expenses. The servicing expenses of the sessions, it must be financed by General Conference, Member States of UNESCO, Associate Members and Non-Member States, which have a set-up 
or which have set up a permanent observation to UNESCO shall bear the expenses of the participation of their observers. UNESCO shall bear the expense of participation of specialists. Article 11, Intergovernmental Committee. An Intergovernmental Committee is hereby established with UNESCO, within UNESCO. Intergovernmental Committee shall examine the advices and recommendations of IBC. The International Intergovernmental Committee shall inform IBC of its opinion. The Intergovernmental Committee, it shall be composed of 36 representatives of member states elected by General Conference. The sessions of this committee shall be convened by the Director General at least once every two years. Joint sessions shall foster dialogue between IBC and Intergovernmental Committee on matters of mutual concern. That is, the joint session shall be chaired by the chairpersons of IBC and Intergovernmental Committee as joint presiding officers. It must be open, that is, the joint session must be open to observers and it must present a report on the meeting to the Director General who shall provide it to the Member States. Article 12, it deals with revision, that is, these rules may be revised by UNESCO Executive Board. That's all about IBC. Hope you all understand the session. Thank you. Have a nice day.